Hi Dharma Circle, welcome to Facebook Live Wednesday. Today is all about awakening your soul through Vedic astrology, through Jyotish. And I'm going to share some very important reminders with you, um, some things to be aware of, myths to debunk, um, so that you can strengthen your Jyotish studies. And I want you to understand why Jyotish is so important for your healing and transformation process and why this is the best tool for uh, your clients and doing your healing work with your clients. There's really nothing else like it. And so let's talk about some of the, the beliefs and misconceptions, some of the myths around Jyotish that um, need to be understood but also transformed so that um, there is no resistance to using this method. Uh, this is a very ancient tool and it is um, a tool that predates the way that Western astrology is used today. It predates so many of the modern Western tools that are being used for healing and transformation. And I feel it's really important that we're in right relationship with the ancient tools. Um, many of you have been studying your Jyotish chart for a long time, but my question for you is, are you in right relationship with this tool? And how to know if you're in right relationship with this tool. So let's talk about some of that. First of all, this is a tool that if you study Jyotish and you are consistent with studying your Jyotish chart, this is a tool that will continue to unfold and give lasting results. So you make an investment into studying this tool and learning from people who are in right relationship with this medicine, who have integrity, who have um, common way, in a, a pure way, in a healing and transformational way that is kind, gentle, supportive, nourishing for the soul. If you commit and make the investment in this knowledge and wisdom in studying your own chart and using the layers to support your healing and transformation and to support your clients in their healing and transformation, there are lifelong benefits to this process. Um, just the other day, I mean, I look at my char chart constantly. I'm looking at Jyotish every day and um, I was looking at my chart the other day and had a new awareness a new discovery and I've been looking at my Jodish chart since I was seven years old so the layers continue to unfold the insights the understanding that you will have the epiphanies the awakenings the um, the new wisdom it will continue to unravel and unfold so I think of Jyotish and the way that I teach Jyotish from a body-centered healing perspective. Like that old saying, you give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day. If you teach a man to fish, he'll be able to feed himself for a lifetime. And that's really the wisdom of Jyotish and why studying your Jyotish chart is so important. So you make an investment in this learning and this growth process and you will continue over the course of your lifetime to benefit from this wisdom so one of the things that we have to understand with any tool and this is any tool but this is also using ancient knowledge and wisdom and a tool like jyotish Jyotish, Jyotish is about bringing light 
to the soul. That is what Jyoti means. It means light. And the study of the light of the soul supports bringing awakening to the whole being. The problem is that most of the Jyotishis that I have encountered in my lifetime, and again, I've been consulting with Jyotishis since I was seven years old. I have um, had the gift and the pleasure of consulting with world-class Jyotishis um, from all over the world um, and many, 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 many sessions over the years. I currently do not consult with any Jyotishis. Um, I do not seek outside counsel. and certain Vedic astrologers. And it's been part of my mission to make sure that this um, tool is not used in a way that causes harm, that it's actually used in a way that brings benefit, nourishment, and healing to bodies, rather than as a predictive tool or a way to instill certain beliefs or dogmas. And it can be used that way. So we have to be very careful how we use this tool. And so in order for you to benefit from Vedic astrology and also use this tool in a way that supports and nourishes your clients, you need to be in right relationship with this tool. That means that you are... you know how to listen to your own inner wisdom that you're not sourcing outside of the self that you're not looking outside of the self for answers that you don't believe on some level that someone else has more answers than you to me when i say being in right relationship with this tool and this is a tool of power jyotish increases our power and if we're not in right relationship with our own power things can get harmful um, especially through a colonized lens so if we're not doing our grief work our trauma work um, our shadow work our decolonizing work then there is a tendency for individuals to not be in right relationship with their own power and that's how this tool gets misused so sourcing from within and being really mindful of your relationship with the outer authority do you believe that me or anyone else has more answers than you do you believe that someone outside of yourself has more um more knowledge or power and that's, that's problematic on a lot of different levels. Sourcing from outside of the self rather from within. And I'm here to remind you that you know more than anyone else about your own body and what your body needs. You are your own medicine. This tool of Jyotish can enhance that inner knowing if used correctly. But if it's used as a tool to source outside of your body to look to someone else for answers, then you are not in right relationship with your own power and you're not in right relationship with this tool. And that's when it becomes dangerous and harmful. So if your clients aren't making progress and you've been using um, all your, your whole toolkit and everyone here in this group, I, I know, has a vast toolkit. You've been gathering tools throughout your lifetime. Each one of you has incredible embodied gifts that you may or may not be uh, fully aware of yet. 
but these embodied gifts were handed to you for the most part from your ancestors from your lineage and um these are the gifts that you are here to share this is your dharma in fact to share these embodied gifts with the world so when you work with your clients and share your gifts and your tools and you support them in their healing journey you may notice that some of benefit greatly and then other clients just don't they don't make the progress they're slow um, maybe you're experiencing this with most of your clients that um, they just they could be making more progress but they just aren't getting there they're not getting there fast enough um, there's something in the way of their progress and I want to give you a little hint here as to why this process that you're you're using with them whatever your methodology is isn't working and why jyotish can support you and your clients in um, being much more precise with your diagnosis um, with your diagnostic skills and abilities and what keeps a client from actually making progress there are a number of reasons um, uh, the thing that I usually see, there are two pieces of this equation that um, hinder people's progress, and this is across the board. And I've worked with hundreds of clients from all over the world uh, for over a decade now, and it's always the same issue at the root. And why people come to me is they are missing a piece of their healing and transformation process and it always has to do with the ancestors and grief work and in a jodas chart we can see exactly what the ancestral issues are um, what this lineage issue is that this contract worker this individual body is here to transform and heal and when we're unaware of first of all our role as a contract worker and secondly what that job even entails we will continue to circle and circle and circle around the elephant in the room and we don't know how to actually work with that elephant and that's what jyotish is so incredibly powerful um, at giving us is this insight this wisdom right there that's where the grief is living in your body this is the ancestral work you are here to transform heal and transcend through and this is the resistance to doing the work and so with consciousness with awareness on this area of your body and your life then we can start to move into this area of resistance in a more conscious effective way and that's where precision and precise diagnosis for body and soul it, there's just no other tool like jyotish there's no other tool like jyotish and i'm going to say something that is extremely controversial and some of you will stop following me and some of you will leave the group and that's fine but i want i want to be really honest with you and where i stand jyotish is far superior to western astrology and if you are someone who wants results for your clients if you are someone who wants clarity and precision with healing and i'm talking soul level healing dharma that's what dharma There is no other tool but Jyotish for this level of accuracy. Western astrology will not ever be able to offer you that. And the ancient rishis knew how to cast a tropical chart. It's not that they didn't know how to cast a tropical chart. They knew it wasn't accurate. And so I always remind people, if you want the whole pie, 
if you want the whole the wholeness and the intelligence of wholeness then jyotish is the only solution western astrology is like getting a slice of the pie and thinking that you have the whole pie and you don't and that there's a lot of problems with thinking that you have a whole pie when you really only have a slice so it's not full knowledge it's not whole knowledge it's not pure knowledge and it's never going to give you the results that you really want if you are someone who wants soul level accurate resources and tools for understanding the entire body physically mentally emotionally and spiritually if you want to understand soul level work dharma which is the the whole reason why uh Jyotish has been used for thousands and thousands of years. It's always been used for Dharma. And that is to keep the soul connected to the light of their own soul. Because there's so much Maya, there's so much illusion in this dark time. And without tools that support awakening the light of the soul, keeping us connected to the light of our soul, we will lose the path. We will lose connection to the truth of our own dharma, the truth of our own purpose in this world. And many of us are here at this time to actually awaken from that self-doubt, uncertainty, lack of clarity, um, the mistrust in ourselves and our own bodies. And Jyotish is the premier tool that brings us back and recenters us around what is actually true um, and awakens the light of our own soul. So one of the, the reasons why Jyotish is so powerful is it can, again, if used properly, if used in a way that is not about causing harm or disconnecting from our own power, from our own inner authority. If we use Jyotish in a way that is about enhancing our own inner knowing, then we have the ability to deepen our self-trust. And that's as much about orienting towards being in right relationship with our inner power and the inner authority as it is studying our body, every house of the chart connects to a very specific body part and life themes. So this is a process of studying your body, know thyself inside and out, understanding how trauma is impacting your body physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, where the undigested grief is living in your body, both from this lifetime and also from your lineage, what was handed to you epigenetically in your physical body, mental body, emotional body, and even spiritual body, and deepening your trust in your own body, in your own inner wisdom, and creating a life that moves you closer to nourishment. This is my life mantra, this is the mantra that I offer to my clients. Move towards the nourishment. And your Jodas chart is a supreme map of what is my deepest nourishment? What nourishes me physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually? And what's the, the thing that's in the way? What are those blockages? Where's the resistance? What's the undigested grief? Where is the disconnection, the trauma, living in my body that is keeping me from trusting myself and literally trusting my soul. That's what Jyotish offers us. And when we use this tool in a way that is least harm, you know, ahimsa, literally, that is not about harming ourselves or our clients, then we can be in right relationship with this tool 
and continue to awaken through the layers, the many, many layers that Jyotish offers. So this is what guarantees your success as a healer and making sure that you are in right relationship with your own medicine. First, you must know yourself. First, you must deepen your own commitment and devotion to knowing yourself, your own body. Then you can be an effective healer and guide for others. And I invite you to really consider what does right relationship mean for you with your tools? What does right relationship mean for you in order to really use your medicine, your gifts, and your tools in a way that is about enhancing, supporting other bodies, other beings, and not getting into trouble with power, ego. And there is a way to be in balance with our tools and our gifts and also be in right relationship with our power. And you get your needs met in this process. You get to have your needs met. You get to be successful. You get to thrive. You get to be visible. You get nourishment and support from the inside and the outside. But this is about being in right relationship with your medicine and tools. And so I really invite you to consider what that means for you, what that would look like in practice. And what might be in the way of you really being in alignment with, in harmony and in balance with your whole being? And usually it's a self-doubt issue. Usually there are some undigested grief or shadow work, ancestral work that's not being tended to. And of course, when we work with a tool and any ancient tool, but specifically when we work with Jyotish, we need to be asking ourselves these questions. What does being in right relationship with this tool mean? What is the investment that I am authority. I'm not sourcing from out here. I'm not looking to someone else to give me all the answers. How am I strengthening my own inner authority and being in right relationship with that, that truth? So this is the way I teach Jyotish. It's what I support my clients in. When you come to work with me, this is about you strengthening your own inner trust. It's not about me telling you what to think, what to believe, what this means in this placement or what that does if it's like this in your chart. No. The way that I teach Jyotish is about supporting you in listening to your own body and your own inner wisdom, physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, so that you can strengthen your own Jyoti, your own inner light. And I don't know any other Jyotishis that I've encountered that teach this way. And it's one of the reasons I stopped going to Jyotishis. Um, it felt too harmful. It took me away from my own center. And I started to really mistrust my gifts. And that's a story for another time. I'll share more about that in another class. But it's one of the reasons why over my lifetime, um, Jyotish has been both a gift and a curse. I've had experiences with Jyotish and Jyotishis that have been very harmful, that have kept me from the light of my own soul. And it's why it's my mission to really support my clients, my sensitive, gifted, wise, healing clients to deepen their own self-trust, to not get distracted, to not lose connection with their own body wisdom 
through an outer authority, but to come back to body, back to soul, and to move towards the deep nourishment within. That is the effective place to be offering our gifts, our wisdom, and our tools. Jyotish is the best tool for healers and for healing if used properly, used with least harm as the intention. And I want to support you in this process. Um, my Jyotish mini course, a foundational mini course for becoming a more skillful healer and being able to lay the foundation for a diagnosis with your clients. We start tomorrow, literally September 1st is when this Jyotish mini course begins. And this is the only time I'm going to be doing this live. So if you want these resources, if you're ready to strengthen the foundation of your diagnostic abilities, um, your skillfulness as a healer, being able to precisely diagnose and know where these challenges are living in the body, but also to support your clients in being more precise, exact with their own healing process, this is your tool, and this is a chance to work with me over a, a week-long period and get daily resources for studying your Jyotish chart, laying this foundation. Uh, post inner light below this video, and I will give you details about this Jyotish mini course. We start September 1st. It's a week long. I'd love to have you join us. If your desire is to be in right relationship with Jyotish and use this tool in a way that enhances and strengthens both your inner wisdom as well as the inner wisdom of your client, you are invited to join me in this process. I look forward to seeing you in the Jyotish mini course for healers and healing. Comment in your light below. I'll follow up with you and give you all the details. All right, everyone. Good to see you today. Thank you for being here live, for watching the replay, and I'll see you inside the mini course. Bye.